Right, the Moe Devlin task, um, we're going to go and get that out of the freezer in a minute and you're going to use hopefully a torch, maybe a lamp, your eyes to judge where the focal point and the decisions about where that light's going to hit that ice. And I'm also going to get some hot water as well because I think it'd be nice to dissolve it. And I promise I won't drop it this time because I dropped the first one, as some of you might have seen. Anyway, we'll have a go at doing that now and hopefully some of this guidance will help me get some really decent photographs from considerations. Oh, there's my frozen dish in the freezer with its bits and pieces. I've got a nice big bubble in that. Exciting stuff. Right, better go and shut that up. Even that as a photograph looking down is quite nice. And I've got a bit of sunshine coming through from behind because I've got a window there. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Mm. Okay then, so we're going to have a little look at what our frozen Mo Devlin style uh, ice experiment with whatever you trapped in your eyes. We're going to see what it looks like. Okay, I'll put that down. I need to shut my freezer now. But even that low sunshine going across that is interesting. That's totally unexpected to students. Right, folks, so you can see I have now got out of the freezer um, my container with my uh, iced flowers. Um, and what happens when you get things out of the freezer, they start to frost over um, as, as they, um, at the air, as the temperatures change, um, I'm sure there's some scientists amongst you that know exactly why that happens. But um, if you look, you get this lovely, like, white effect. You need a torch, and uh, before you start taking photographs, just see what you can pick up with a torch on the surface if you've got protruding edges, because that, uh, if I hold it close enough, would give you some really lovely textures if I move the light. And those are all photographs. Okay. Um, I'm going to now leave that torch on because it creates interesting light, even though I've got a direction of light coming from the window just here. Um, if I just try and carefully, I've got this dish here in case I drop it again. Um, if I just carefully uh, ease it out, it has been out of the fridge a couple of minutes um, just so that I could make sure it would slide out. That came out pretty well, actually. Um, so here's my torch as my light source. And you can see by just casting different lighting, you should be able to get some really nice, I'll try and make it go closer, you should be able to get some really nice potential for photographs. Okay, exploring theme. And if we were to zoom in, very difficult seeing as I'm holding it and my camera's doing the recording today, but you can see how you can get variations from the lighting underneath, like Mo, Mo Devlin gets. Those little plastic beads look quite good, actually. Right, so there it is in its natural state. Now, my son made for one of his projects during lockdown, he's a bit younger than you, um, he made this like crazy torch with LEDs and I thought the LEDs might be quite good. It might be that you've got some Christmas uh, fairy lights or some kind of LEDs that you could uh, influence the colouring on the surface. Or you might have some old, you know, quality street wrappers, some filters to put behind your torch. Um, I'm not saying go and eat a whole load of chocolates, but there might be something that you can put as a filter in front of your camera lens or in front of the torch, because it can come from the light source, as we learned um, before lockdown, for year 10 in particular. But it will influence, obviously, the colours. Um, so you can try quirky lighting. I'll turn that off now. Uh, next bit is to go outside. So I'm going to now go outside. I'm going to go and get some hot water. I'm going to melt bits. Well, we're outside now, and I try to encourage the sun to come out and stay out. There was some beautiful lighting on my table out in the garden, um, and the lighting obviously affects how those colours and how um, the ice looks. So this is natural daylight, but you can still use the torch to influence and kind of create a sheen, different angles. Obviously, I can't tip this up. You might be able to do that with yours. And again, you can influence some of the brighter parts by um, using your torch underneath um, to make things glow. Depends how thick your ice is. Um, I haven't flipped this over because I've got this beautiful flower here that you can't quite see. Um, but if I melted it a little bit, that's the other side. Still looking quite interesting and cloudy and moody. So a face put, coming through uh, something like this. So for year 10, that's where I was heading. Whatever objects you've got, it could be what's in your mind. And then you'd have your portrait um, blended in using CS5. And it wouldn't take us that long to do when we get back to school in <laughs> September. <laughs> Um, so some of the, what I'm asking you to do is to generate photographs that we can actually add to and add evidence to for your coursework and for year nines this does absolutely no harm for you because you're missing time and possibly at the start of your coursework as well. So persevere with it, freeze things and create some nice effects. Um, I had this funny little hole on this side which I thought was quite nice, we could do some macro on that but the reason for the water if I just turn this over 
um, is I could just, this is warm water, I could just start to dissolve a little bit. You have to be quite patient with it because um, you want the ice to melt, but not too quickly. So I'm now hopefully getting a bit of that flower texture. And it might be a little Lego figure or Lego character that you're working on. And then if I did some macro, I can't get close enough with this little camera, sadly. Um, but if we did some macro work using some of the details within the ice, um, you could obviously you know, extend your photographic skills by focusing on certain parts. Anyway, that's uh, basically dissolving and we get some clarity as well. You might see, no Mo Devlin gets all the eye circles. We're now getting some really lovely little uh, effects here. So when I've finished with this, I'm just gonna stick it back into that container. I'm gonna refreeze it. Um, you can try all sorts of things. You can try fizzy water or lemonade with objects in. You get lovely little bubbles that come um, and in as part of it. So just experiment and explore. And don't forget, you've got a surface texture there as well, which I can't easily show you because I haven't. I can't tip this up. But there's interesting surfaces from where those petals are coming through and the beads are emerging. I reckon you should be able to get a good 30 photographs from zooming in, playing around with different light. Um, and we can add it onto your PowerPoints, which are on shared drive. You can carry on with this as well, as well over the summer holiday if you prefer. I was about to leave you to it and then I discovered a darker place with a source of light and some depth from, in this case, it's my cooker because it's in semi-darkness, um, gives you some nice alternatives with your lighting and it brings out the bubbles a little bit more. There we are. So don't forget darkness okay and, and moving that light around you could go in a dark cupboard or blacken a room if you've got a garage maybe and see what photographs you can get that way don't forget to photograph some of the spaces where you're doing this as well because that all works with your powerpoints